Good afternoon. Good afternoon to Pinhole Quilting. I'm Liz and my husband Pete is just behind the camera, tapping away on his laptop. We wish you all a very merry seasonal greeting as it's nearly Christmas. Nearly Christmas. So as long as we've been good all year, we should get all the long arms that we want. So <laughs> fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. Well, Pete and I have just rushed back from doing some uh, promotion. And um, yeah, we've been had a very busy day, very busy, busy day. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't miss another session. All of our things most recently seem to have been on Fridays. Don't they, Pete? You've had to cover for me twice. You do, including You didn't, want to, didn't want to wear the dealy boppers today, did you? It I, feels I very weird. It you better, to be It's fair. very, very weird. So got these, got these to wear for the next 20 days or so until 12th night. They're not very comfortable in bed, got to be honest. Um, right, what we're going to talk about now is nice Christmassy stuff. Christmassy stuff. We're going to talk about offers that we've got as well on our website and also gift vouchers. If your loved one doesn't know what to buy you, here's an idea. Get them to give you a gift voucher. Our gift vouchers can be ordered online in whatever denominations they would like and they get sent to you and they can choose to send it to you on Christmas Day. So how cool is that? So look out for gift, is it gift vouchers or gift tokens? Gift, gift vouchers. Gift vouchers. Gift vouchers on our website. Yes. There might be the occasional man around who hasn't even started thinking about Christmas presents yet. No. Mentioning any names? No names mentioned. It's okay because Pete and I are in the same category in that respect. I, I used to do all my Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve and I found it remarkably easy to do. I just whiz around to get everything and the shops were never that busy. So... Any questions, Pete? Any answers? Any people? No. We've got just four people. We oh, bless, we, bless. We didn't know if we'd managed to we have didn't. time to do this this afternoon, so we didn't promote we it didn't. in advance. And we've had a busy week, haven't we? Because we've, um, what do, do you know, I was trying to think what we'd done this week. I know we were moving an infinity and servicing an infinity. Oh, that was really nice. Yeah. And, uh, but I've completely got a memory blank on what else I've done this week. <laughs> I look at the diary. In the okay. meantime, Graham's on. Excellent. Merry Graham, Christmas Merry too, Christmas. Graham. Yes. Merry Christmas to Mr. Graham Farah of Far Corner Quilting, who does a great job quilting other people's quilts up in Yorkshire, yeah. very close to Leeds. Well, on Tuesday you were in London, Liz, you might remember. Oh, yeah, I was in London on Tuesday. That's right. And uh, saw a fantastic person called Tina Crawford, artist, who's got a capri, and she maxes it out. So, hi, Tina. Congratulations on the birth of your new babe. And I hope that everything goes well with those commissions. So, Tina works as a professional artist, and it's worth having a look at her stuff. Her, her things are really interesting, and she does things like um, uh, stitched drawings of St. Paul's Cathedral and St. Paul's Cathedral cell mugs with her stitched drawings on them. This feels very weird. And uh, she's great. So I've, I think um, our social media person should be posting online some of her the videos I took of her stitching at great speed, 2,200 stitches per minute on the Capri, maxing it out and looking at her husband and drawing him in stitch. How cool is that? So I'm really excited to see what Tina does with her Capri. Um, right, Pete, just remind me, what, what was I doing last week? Oh, yeah, it was your birthday. And, um, yeah, well, anyway, we've, yeah. Had, we've had some very exciting, uh, very exciting installations going on at the moment in Scotland, haven't we? Yes, yes. Derek's, uh, Derek's been doing two installations in yeah. deepest, far west yes. Scotland. Yes. Stornoway, Stornoway. Stornoway yesterday. And, and another Ireland. One. Near called Ullapool. Isla Lewis, yes. Another one near Ullapool tomorrow. True. Tomorrow, yeah. And then he's got another coming up in Ireland in the new year. That's right. So those are both um, with posts at Juana Mara and one Forte. So very cool. Congratulations to the purchasers of those machines. We look forward to seeing the pictures I'm sure Derek will take. And if, with your permission, we'll post them online. Um, and, uh, I mean, one person has already had, her, uh, had a machine from us before, so she should segue to the forte quite nicely so just say hello to a few yep. more joiners lorraine gray oh lorraine hi lorraine's made stratospheric progress i would say and done quite a few zoom courses with is that the right word 
It sounded like stressless ferret rather than stratus ferret. Well, maybe it was that thing a bit. Let's say stratus ferret. Um, uh, <laughs> stressless ferret. Yes. Uh, Carol uh, Watson. Hey, Carol. And Roz is online. Hi, Roz. Hi, Roz Rossiter. Is it yes. Roz Rossiter? Yes, yes. Hi, Roz. Happy Christmas to you and your lovely family over there in Cambridgeshire. And Val Sawatsky from mm. over in the States. In the States, hi. States, is it? Or Canada? I never remember. I think Val's Canada. Can we say Canada? Canada. Val, you correct us. And I, I wonder if it's as cold in Canada as it's been here today. We had minus 11, didn't we? My, was it yeah, minus 11? Minus 12. Thing. Minus 12. Minus 12. Minus 11 yesterday, minus 12 today, according to the car. And uh, that that's pretty cold. That is pretty cold. So we've got our long johns on today, haven't we, Pete? Well, we've got a pair each. We don't share them. Um, now, what we want to do is talk about Christmassy stuff. And also, we've got a fantastic offer on our glide thread with 10% off until the end of December. So even if you're not buying it for yourself, uh, sorry, even if somebody's not buying it for you for Christmas, then obviously there is the opportunity to buy it yourself. Uh, get your orders in quickly if you want them for Christmas, because I think today was the last guaranteed posting date for Christmas orders according to the revised Royal Mail service. We're talking about <clears throat> sewing in reverse. Sewing in reverse. This is the bobbin side, and this is the top side. Now look at that, Pete. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to re-thread my machine. So this is the top. Because it's got glide on it at the moment. And if I flip it in reverse, this is actually the bobbin side. It's really effective. Yeah. So Val is indeed from Canada, and she ah. says it's going down to minus 28 next week. But oh, is, oh, is, is that, that Celsius? Yeah, it'll be Celsius because they're um, they are metric, aren't they? A bit Canada. more modern than um, yes Fahrenheit. Well, we're just mixed, aren't we? We're mixed. Um, this this that I used here is actually Ricky Tim's Razzle Dazzle. Even though it doesn't have it on the cone anymore, I'm pretty sure that is the one I used. But something similar would be you could use this wonderful one, which is a metallic and rayon, like this, it's got bits in it. Um, so we're going to use that. And on the top, we're going to use, uh, actually, you don't have to use that one. We could use, uh, let's see, something and, um, fun. We've got MK online as well. Merry MK, Christmas you, Merry MK. Christmas, MK, to you and Paul. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. And Nell's in Selby, where it's oh. minus five brass monkeys. Hi, Nell. I bet your dogs are loving this cold winter weather. My dog, Jess, sadly no longer with us, um, used to love, love the cold weather. It kind of brought out another side of her character, um, which was which was lovely. I mean, she used to, in fact, the colder it was, I think the happier she was. She used to, we used to pretty much break the ice to go and throw her sticks and stuff. That sounds dangerous, doesn't it? But... She never had a problem. Right. So, metallic thread. We use a thread net. To put a thread net on, you go from the underside, like that, and then pop the excess so that the cone will sit on the thread net. And then it goes on the back on my cone holder, like so. Through there, that, do that. And then I just put it through one of the pretensioners, so it doesn't need to be through all three. In fact, we don't really want it to be all th through all three because... If it does, it forces the the, uh, the outside of this is basically a metal wrapped around a poly core, and it's what you don't want to do is sort of have it so that that exterior is exposed so that it can chafe the inner core. So that's why we just put it through one of these, and I normally put it through the top one. Oh, it's not. I'm trying to do it so I don't get in the way of the camera which leads to some awkward angles. One of the things we note whenever we run classes here and get people to try metallic thread is that uh, lots of customers are quite reluctant to give it a try, but once they do, and once they know just oh, they the don't want to take little it tricks, yes, they, they don't, don't want to take it off. It off. <laughs> they just keep doing all the exercises with metallic thread. It's wonderful. So that is the key. Having the confidence to try it, knowing what you need to do now. That's it threaded up pretty much. As I've threaded it up, I'm just checking on that tension. I'm going to let it out a bit so that it's not going to break. Do that before you start 
testing it. Oh, I always do that anyway. Any thread, I just check, particularly if I've changed from a, a more extreme, maybe like a 30 weight to a 100 weight or something. You always check it before you go any further. So the other thing I need to do is change my needle. So we've got our little hex in the center of this, and I'm going to use my very bad eyesight. Yeah, that is a 16 needle, so I'll get rid of that. I'm going to put an 18 needle in. Put a regular 18. I could use one of the high-speed ones, but I'm going to use a regular 18 sharps. Put that in, like so, and then check it with my dealy boppers on. What have you got in the bobbin lids at the moment? Um, I don't know. Ah, nothing yet. Nothing. Okay. That's I'm gonna... why you missed it. We haven't said it. Oh, yeah, I'm sort of working my way down. Right, bobbin. So I'll take that one out, and I'm going to put in the Ricky Tim's Razzle Dazzle to wind the bobbin. Either, if it will work on a bobbin winder, you then use the bobbin winder, but you'd have to let the tension diss out quite a lot for this. So I've literally just hand wound it on here. And the same for this. This is another Ricky Tim's Razzle Dazzle. Um, I've, I've done the same on this one. I've used both of these. Um, this one's nice. It's a multi. It's lovely. Really nice thread. So it's only partly wound. I've, I've used it before. So to tension it, we're going to put it in, always comes off to the right, put it underneath a spring by going through the slot and then under the spring. And then we can do like a bobbin drop test as we normally would. So I'm going to just loosen that off. So Nell says that her dog would love to swim at the moment, but the pond is completely frozen. So yeah. I, and Nell's dog is called Demos. Demos. I had to look up Demos, D-E-I-M-O-S. Yeah. You know anything about Demos, Liz? Uh, I feel like I should because I've read so many um, books on Greek and myths so, so and stuff. So Demos is the, is the god of dread and terror in Greek mythology. Yeah, well, I, I should have known, should really know. Is your, but, is your dog dreadful and <laughs> terrible then, Nell? Yeah. See, that, that is so typical of Nell. She has these really interesting reasons why she does things always, always and uh, with great knowledge. That might be sticky too much. So make sure you don't unwind it too much, but I'm going to just do it so that it runs fairly freely like that. That's, that's coming off not as much as, I don't normally set it as much as when I'm doing like a normal bobbin, but that's, I can feel that that's just sliding down. We'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work, I'll adjust it. We don't normally fiddle with the bobbin afterwards, but of course it's a bit different when you're using something with such a different technique. So yeah, that feels good on the top. So I'm gonna have gold on the top, silver on the bottom. Now the thing to remember about this sort of work is it's not really, it's, it's not, it is couched almost because that top thread is holding that, that uh, bobbin thread down. So it'd be interesting to see what the effect is. I'm doing it with gold because I want it to actually show I want to see. You might not be able to see it because it depends on how qu good the quality is of the Facebook Live. So we will. We're just in manual on this. This is Sweet 16. It's a second user um, ex customer machine that we're selling. So it'll be on our prelovelongarms.co.uk website. If anyone's interested in a, a meter square machine, we've got an op optional table on this one. Um, it's absolutely lovely machine and very low mileage. So let's bring up the thread. So what I'm going to do, I, that will bring up that bobbin thread, but that's as far as I'll go. Right, which end is which? It's nearly there. Hang on. Let me just pull that back. So Sorry. Nell says there's a story about the name behind a dog. Of oh, course. yeah? Of course there would be. a story, but she'll have to tell us some other time. Ah. Uh, okay. So I bought up the couching thread. I'm just going to say... And when I bring up that couching, that sorry, that underside bobbin thread, I just make sure it is flowing. Um, if it felt too tight, I'd probably take the bobbin out and have another go. Right, foot pedal. Maximum speed of 30%. I'm going to get my paddles. 
and start stitching. Have a look. Just do one more and then I'll have a look. Have a look. So, Joan, I'm pleased that your thread's turned up quickly with all the strikes going on in the UK at the moment. It's difficult to know when things are going to arrive, but Royal Mail have done well on this occasion. And thank you, Joan, for being one of those people who bought one of our ex-demo Amaras that we were selling. I ought to just say that they are now all sold. So you've missed the boat if it was something you were thinking about. They tend to go quite quickly because ex-demo Amaras are very rare. There we go. Oh, what's going on there? That what? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. That's it's just fine. I've just, just got the, thread. yeah, yeah. I'll just cut that off. Yeah, let me just, um, I'll just move it aside, then I can start again. Take the up, so you can have a look. There we go. Beautiful. Very effective. Really effective. Love it. Absolutely love it. It's lovely on both sides. So not difficult to do, just with a few simple guidelines. And where you go. I love that. Now, if you had a something like this thin ribbonized thread, this one is sulky sliver. It's lost its end, but um, with that and this kind of thread, you need to pop it on the optional horizontal spool holder so that it comes from underneath like this, and then we can put it through the pretensioner from there and then just thread it up as normal. So let's just have a go with that one as well. Not all metallic threads are the same. No. Oh no, they really vary. It's a generic term that unfortunately means uh, different things to different manufacturers, and some threads work <clears throat> well on these machines, some not so. So we sell the Glisten range from Glide, which works yeah. very well, as long it as you does. use a thread net the right size needle and just use one of those holes on the pretensioner. MK says she's going to give this a try on the Pro Stitcher. Is that something you've ever tried, Liz? Um, I have. To, oh, no, I haven't done a quilting in reverse. No, I haven't. Um, I've, I've done quilting in reverse insofar as I've sort of quilted from the back of the quilt and used that design, but no, and I've never tried that. MK, you'll have to let me know how you get on because I would really love to know how you get on with that. I think there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that really well. well. I mean, Pro Stitch is only driving the exactly. machine, so it should exactly. work just the same. Yeah, it? just Although, go slow because um, with metallic thread, obviously it builds up quite a bit of uh, heat. Um, and your bobbin's not going to last too long either, is it? No. No, but for special things. Right, so with this, I make sure it goes in the tension discs and then I let go of the tension discs. Then I release the tension until it's moving smoothly. That's how I tension these. And then... Good afternoon, Janice. Glad you've joined us. Janice Collett. Oh, hi, Janice. Brilliant. So I've still got the 18 needle in here. A bit more tricky to thread this with reflections. So Linda's uh, online as well. Hi, Linda. Merry Christmas Merry to you. Merry Christmas, Thanks Linda. Thanks for your support, as always, for pinhole quilting this year. Yeah. So Linda's saying on Pro Stitcher, you have to make sure that you have enough in the bobbin, so not wide and not dense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you'd probably want to sort of split your design up so that... And you might get to know how much you could do because you can always on the pro stitcher of course we've got the stitch stats 
So it'll tell you how long it's sewing for. So if you made a note of that, then you might be able to work out kind of pro rata for your bobbin how much you can do, maybe. Right, so I'm not sure this is going to bring it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it up to the underside this time. I don't want to break the thread. Yes, because this is very fine, this metallic, yeah. isn't it? So I'll just hold that on the underside. Right. Looks like in a second. Speed it up a bit. And there we go. Just do needle up. Close up that on the back and then on the front. I'm not sure it's the best design I've ever done, but I'm just playing. Oh, and snip those. So don't be afraid of using metallic thread, particularly at this time of year, it's so Christmassy. And you can really play around with it and you know have fun with it. Sometimes I see, you know, people talk about how they've bought metallic threads at various shows and things. They've been tempted to buy these nice sparkly threads and then don't use them because they kind of go, oh, it just snaps and, you know, I just can't use it. My machine doesn't like it. Most of the time, it's about using the right needle, having the right tension for both the bobbin and the top and not going too fast. I would rather go at the speed I was going and complete the project without a thread break then I would going slightly faster and having thread breaks because you can control it. You can hear the machine if, or you can hear the thread sometimes stretching if there is a problem with it. So, you know, just take it slow. It's not a, it's not a race and uh, enjoy it. Enjoy it. One of the first quilts I ever quilted actually on um, my dad's old featherweight, I used red, green, and silver metallic threads and did free motion. It was like little, it's, um, it's the one we've got going from the kitchen to the dining room, Pete. And it's, it's got a, it's basically foundation piece. So it's quite heavily, lots and lots of the layers. Um, and I used, I used the, um, the metallic threads for that. So, um, and that's on an old thing of featherweight. You can use it, go for it on your domestic or on your long arm, whatever you like. Okay, so um, what other things, Pete, are we going to talk about for Christmas closing? And we shall talk about plans for 2023 a little bit, perhaps. So we're going to be at various shows in 2023. Uh, we'll be at Duxford in March. That's the first one that we sort of kick off our year with, the March show. And we'll be at Malvern Quilt Show in May, which is a lovely one, and we always enjoy that one. We'll obviously, a bit of Festival Quilts. Um, and we'll be at Morgan Quilt Show in the autumn. We're also going over to Belfast this year. So uh, that's, is that September? I think that's about the 6th of September. It's well, the first yeah. weekend in September. That's right. So we look forward to seeing um, our Northern Irish and Irish customers um, in um, that quilt show, which is in Belfast, and it's organised by Yvonne, Yvonne, Yvonne Mac, McTemony. McTemony. Yeah. Um, and we're delighted to be working with Yvonne because I think she's done, she did a great job by the sound of it last year. Um, and we couldn't do it last year, it just didn't work with everything that was going on with festival uh, planning. But fantastic. We look forward to seeing you over there and we'll bring our machines and um, hopefully we'll be, I 
In fact, we've already asked them. Derek and Sandra are available. Um, Derek's our service engineer in Ireland, as we mentioned earlier, and his lovely wife, Sandra, um, who has um, some lovely long arms and a Vanti and a Pro Stitcher on her Amara. So fantastic. We look forward to meeting up with you um, at the various quilt shows. If there are any other ones, we'll let you know. We're also having various open days, and we'll let you know about the dates for those. But that will be something that we do more on a more regular basis so that people can come along and try the machines. We'll have some entertaining and informative uh, talks and stuff as well. And for those people who are existing customers, we will be able to show you some of the new products that are coming out. We're very excited because um, the Amara family has been launched at Houston in 2022. And there are three machines in the Amara family. And the one that we sell at the moment, the Amara 20 inch, um, is not really changing. But the Amara 24 is what was the Forte. And also there'll be a stationary Amara, um, which, as I was mentioning, the textile artist Tina Crawford earlier, she was quite tempted by the thought of having an even faster machine. Um, but I think even Tina would, would be struggling to max out on that. Um, but mind you, time will tell. Time will tell. I'm sure she'll come along to a show and have a play. Um, and it's quite frightening when she starts going. It's so impressive that those machines can go so fast. Um, Okay, uh, yeah, Christmas closing. Harrogate. Did we mention Harrogate? We're going to Harrogate as well. Yes, year, it's the usual. The autumn show. The autumn at show. The showground. Yeah, the autumn show, which is at um, yeah the end of the month. Oh no, they've changed it, haven't they? I can't remember when it is. It's on. I think it's on our website. It's on their website. Oh, excuse me a second. I'm just going to the so shot. We do the show at the Great Yorkshire Showground, but not the one in the centre of Harrogate. Yeah. Just for logistics re issue reasons, really. Yes, I did do the one in the centre of Harrogate. People ask us if we do that one, but getting these machines um, out again on the Sunday night across a busy road is just not not a very much fun, so we don't do that one. I can see my dealy boppers on your screen. They do move around quite a bit, don't they? That's great. <laughs> All right, um, talk to us about opening then, Pete. For Opening, well... Yeah. What well, we in, in theory, we're saying we're, we're closed between Christmas Eve and New Year. I'm sure that we'll still be responding to emails and things in that time. Uh, we you know, we're do. never really closed, are we? We don't. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but the showroom will be pretty much closed then. Yeah. Apart from getting some machines ready, perhaps, for deliveries and installations in the New Year. Yes. So we have had a record year this year in we terms have. of sales of machines. A record year. And we've been here, there, and everywhere, haven't we? We, <laughs> we really have. have. Yes. Yeah, no, it's great. We're absolutely delighted by all the new customers that we've welcomed to the Handy Quilter family uh, this year. We're looking forward to seeing a number of you at the March workshops, and I'll be posting the dates for the next workshops as well, which are, I think, in April or May, aren't they? We'll definitely... I'll sorry, we're not, I should have looked these things up, but we were literally travelling back in the car about half an hour before we started. Yeah. So, so we've got the workshop, foundation workshops 13th and 14th of March. Yeah. We won't pick Cheltenham week again. <laughs> <laughs> and the next <coughs> classes will be at the end of May, 31st of May, 1st yeah. of June. Yeah, 31st of May, 1st of June. So really, those are the ones that yeah. newish customers will be looking yeah. at. Yeah, yeah, because you, you need, we feel that because there's so much information online that you can get going and we can do WhatsApp, we can do Zoom uh, as required on a one-on-one -on -one basis to resolve any issues that you might have. But suffice to say that once you've got those that first quilt or two under your belt, that's when you start to really get the benefit of the foundation workshop. I mean, we call it a foundation workshop and it is very much sort of after you've got going that you need that that class. You'll find much more benefit. For, sometimes we've had people who've not even touched their machine or used it, and we find they don't get as much out of it as um, as if they'd had a few months of practice or even three months of practice or more. So uh, just check that out um, for our March and May workshops. I believe actually, Pete, I'm going to say that I think our March workshop is now full. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So we might have to look at that. So we? both days? Of... Both days. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so we might have to look at that. All right. And Nell says, it's, and, and such a family. Yes, Nell, I think you were one of the first 10 customers of the yes. home quilter machines in the UK. Yes. I will never forget Nell coming to that Festival of Quilts. And, and it was so, it's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant to have you on the various workshops over the years and giving us information about, you know, teachers that you think uh, would be valuable to have come over here. And we... 
we're planning on some exciting workshops in 2023 uh, with uh, some, ex yeah, some really good teachers. And we, we, it's, and we've now got many, many, many hundreds of customers. We do, we do. And, but that, what that allows us to do is to have a customer base so that we can get these international yeah. teachers across and mm -hmm. fill them with happy quilters. Yep. Okay. Um, any any questions or anything anybody wants to, me to show them? Because that would be kind of cool, no, wouldn't it? No, there's people saying they like metallic threads. Oh, they do? Um, Good. Linda, again, says lots of play before committing to the actual quilt really helps. Oh, yeah. Shall I get my... Let me get my samples while you're talking, Pete. And uh, Roz likes metallic too. Um, Nell makes this point that she's made before, and I, I certainly agree that the sound of your machine, you will get to know the sound of your machine very well, and you can learn a lot just from what's going on. If you hear an unusual sound, then stop and investigate. Um, it happened to me yesterday when I was using the machine, and for some reason the thread had got caught in the bobbin area. Just stop and sort it out first. Um, I did have one customer recently, nobody had said this to me before, who said that they knew their machine so well, they'd had it nearly 10 years, that they yeah. could tell if the tension was right just from the sound of the machine. Wow. I had not heard that before, so I'd be fascinated to know if we've got any other really yeah. experienced machine users who feel that yeah. they, they can get the tension uh, close just by listening. By listening. It's, it's, a lot of it is observation and... One of the things that I've noticed is if a customer's machine is too tight on the bobbin tension and therefore too tight on the top tension, it almost, because Glide is so forgiving, that you can almost hear it pinging when they're sewing. It's really interesting. It won't break, but it'll just ping. And I've heard that before on a WhatsApp call, which is bizarre. Yeah, it, it just, it sounded different to how mine does. So, Linda was talking about practicing. So this is my, I've used this sample a lot, I know. But this is my punk chicken. And this was my practice piece um, of testing out. This is all metallic here, metallic, metallic. This is metallic. There's sliver up here. There's lots of different metallics. And that was all tested out prior to doing my finished punk chicken, which I did on the radiance fabric, which again has got tons. This has got that mix uh, metallic. This here is this type of thread and most people would go oh my goodness you wouldn't want to put that through your needle but I did. Yeah that looks really thick. It is really thick. It's about as thick as I'd ever stitch with I would say on the on the machines. This is a very wiry metallic it's it's really that was quite tricky that one in some ways but it's still stitched fine. Um, so but yeah just test it. Just test it. So there's my test piece. And metallic on radiance fabric. That's a good combination. Yeah. Well, I mean, radiance isn't difficult. It just scares you when you first look at it and you think, oh, my goodness, so how am I going to stitch on that? And then you do, and it's fine. But you do have to stabilize it first with a woven cotton uh, fusible. This is a piece that Carly Porter left with us. Oops. I seem to have got caught up on the machine. Um, yes. Carly left us with this. This is actually couched with metallic. Um, so this has got a lame that went through the couching foot instead. So that's another way that you can do a really nice effect if you like your metallics. So there's the various options. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Yeah, so Sheena says, it, she, that's interesting, she says, I can tell almost by sound if there's a tension issue. Yeah. And I'll stop as soon as possible when I hear mm -hmm. any noise change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It, it really, you really can. On, on these machines, it's it, you know, you do get the more you use it, the more you understand it, and the more it becomes familiar to you. Um, yeah, just get on the machine. Okay. Um, Nell says, "Good Lord, was it that long ago?" What? That she had the machine. Presumably. Yeah, according to our records. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. and Linda says, check Carly Porter's post on the puff quilt on the long arm. It's really cool. I oh, I seen saw that. her making that. She was stuffing, stuffing the quilt. So she sewed a section and then stuffed it as she went. It was, amazing. It was incredible. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. but I didn't see her says, starting it, mm. but I saw, yeah, Carly Porter, puff quilt. 
You see, if they think about something like Carly, Carly's continually innovating, and you know, with her Honesty Fabric brand as well, and she's got all her Zoom classes. I think you know, she's definitely someone to check out her website. You just, you know, she's always thinking of new things. She's one of those sort of leaders of um, in different trends and things, which is really good. It was brilliant when she came over to see us in the UK and she did some teaching with us. She did some classes at the, at the um, studio and then she did, um, we did some lectures as well, lecture demos. Um, and I mean, it was just brilliant. It was the first time she'd ever done that outside of the US. She'd done Houston Quilt Market and then the following year she came and saw us and that's when she left Handy Quilter. So she used to assemble the machines. So she knows about them so much, which is great. Right, Pete, I keep saying right. I think that's it, isn't it? Will we do a final, I'm not sure, it's Christmas, it's is Christmas it Christmas Eve, Eve, isn't it? No. Yeah, we won't no. do that. So, yeah, this this will be it from us. Until do you want to come, come this side of the camera? Should we put your... No, 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 they've seen me twice. No, no, recently. no, put your, no. I want your hat on. Yeah, you come can on. wear my hat. Santa, no, Pete, come on. No, we, want, we want Pete you to... Wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I can do it from this and side a Happy of the New Year. Well, you can't tell you can't tell I, him, I, can I've you? I've seen your, your you see what I struggle of, with. Your comments about you know suspected takeover. So yeah, <gasps> yeah. you are rightfully I, back as the face of Timor oh, Quilting. Oh, I don't know. All those likes, Pete. They like you. You're the man who makes women happy. Don't forget. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Was that, that one can we... woman said that to me once? <laughs> And I'm very old now. <laughs> and it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, <laughs> before we get into anything more personal, <laughs> we will move on. Say Merry Christmas to all of our lovely customers and to our friends all around the world. And we hope you have a very safe and a very happy Christmas. Merry Christmas all and a very prosperous 2023. Absolutely. Bye now. <laughs>